this is Valentine's Day week. Yeah. And so, which has very little to do with what we're talking about this morning. But, but we'll occupy a lot of attention on the airways and in some of our minds and, and, and uh, emotions. It will be quite significant. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, uh, that uh, what we really want to talk about is God's love and how that is a foundational quality of his nature. And to try to compare the two, Valentine's Day and God's love, is like drinking a sip of water and from that trying to describe an ocean. It's like just saying, okay, there's, there's a little bit of similarity, but not that much. The Valentine's Day is sort of the, the froth of the of the cappuccino, you know, that, that, that is kind of exciting in the moment, and that isn't bad, it's good. God honors romantic expression, but, but it's not where this starts. Yeah. It's, it's not what that deep heart of God is focused on. When we talk about Jesus' relationship with us, it's not based on trying to describe it in any kind of romantic terms. It's about much, much more. There's studies that have been done about what children need. There's a king back when Germany still had kings in the 1300s, King Frederick commissioned a study where he wanted to find out what is the innate language that babies would speak if they're not trained to speak other languages. As a German king, what was his hypothesis? Of course they would speak German, <laughs> right? And so he had people take babies from their mothers so that he could conduct this experiment. And so they were in a facility and he had nurses that would take care of these babies. The rules were the nurses were not allowed to talk to the babies because they wanted to see what the language was that just started to come out of them without any stimulation going in. Oh, and the other rule was they weren't supposed to touch the babies. I imagine they somehow keep them clean from their diaper or something like that, but, 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 but not to touch and cuddle and, and, and show any kind of love. Now, what do you think the result of the experiment was? What language did those babies talk? Nothing. They didn't talk any language because they all died. They died not because they were starving. They had plenty of food. They died not because they were exposed into the cold. The facility where they were housed was warm. But what they did have was the love of human touch, was the nurture, and they didn't thrive. And all of them, all, every one of them, as I read this account, died. So every person has a built-in need for love. Every person has a built-in need for love that can't be generated from ourselves. It must come from outside. We try to do that in, in, in the ways that we can in, in our ministries here at church and how we reach out. Pastor Kia, who gives guidance to the food 
ministry, the food pantry and the garden, things like that. You'll hear her say sometimes, it's not about the food. It's about engaging in the relationships with people. Now, the food is an important conveyance of that heart. But the food without that heart of love would be kind of artificial and not that significant. So if you've ever been there on Thursday, you know that we have a very inefficient system, which has people coming in just a couple at a time to shop and to get the food that they want. And others are waiting. Well, not just waiting. They're waiting and talking and interacting and sharing life and talking with each other and sometimes talking with us. And, and uh, so because if they're bellies are full and their souls are starved, what does it profit? Mm. Let me say it can work the other way too. James says if you say God loves you but don't do anything for the physical needs, it also is empty and full. We did the same thing with Safe Haven a couple weeks ago where we said, please, if you, you know, bring food, but but if you can, stay and eat with. It's, it's, it's not just, just, well, here's the food. It's not just serve the food. It's like join in, eat with, and, and, and be part of. Let's, let's engage in relationships. Because every person carries this DNA of being made in the image of God. It's what you carry because you were created. It's not what you carry because you receive Jesus as your Savior. That is another step. But this initial step that the DNA of an image, a piece of the image of God that's part of you is part of every person of humanity. Whether it's easy to see or not. So, God is the one who this starts from, who's the source. And the main ingredient, if God was a recipe, the, the, I mean, what, could, could we erase that around the night? Uh, the, the, uh, just like in a recipe, if you're making a cake, the main ingredient is flour, right? There's more to the cake than that. You don't just eat flour and say, I've had a cake, right? right? But, but you can't do cake without flour, right? That's how love is to God. The scripture we're going to look at this morning says God is love, which is not to say that the essence of love is all that God is. If you're loving to people, then you are extending God to people. That's not because God is a person. There's other qualities, but this foundational way that he expresses himself to us, what his heart is toward you more than anything else is love. Yeah. I was doing this brief word study this week, and, and uh, like, like where in the scripture it says God is something. And... And so a lot of times it's like God is faithful, God is merciful. It uses a verb that describes um, what his action is, what he, what, huh? Help me. Huh? I, I, I like, it's, it's an adjective, you say. Okay, yeah. Right. So, no, no, that's what I wanted. And, and, and so love is what? To say God is love, love is a noun in that case, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so it doesn't say God is faith. It says God is faithful. But it doesn't say God is loving. It says God is love. Okay? So there's two words in the New Testament that it says God is, and then there's a noun. God is love, and God is light. So the only two words that I could find in my brief 30-minute study uh, but, you know, with 
Google, you can do a lot. <laughs> uh, but, but, but that's what we're talking about. This essence, this entity of who the revelation of God is to us. So when that love that comes from God is not acknowledged, it's but a fragment of what the true intent is. It's, it just has so many blinders over that source. So there's four ways that love is referred to in the scripture. And there's lots written on this, but one is the, the Valentine's Day love, the romantic love, which is easy to fall into and easy to fall out of. Which is why God gave us this covenant called marriage Amen. to enter into so that we're not willy-nilly falling in and falling out of this kind of romantic love. Another kind of love is, is family love. The love that families have for each other, that's sticking to it. I'm terribly annoyed with you today, but I would give my life for you. A third kind is the love of friendship. The love that, in the scripture it says, there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. There's a kind of loyalty that happens, not because genetics brought you together, but because shared experiences, because common hopes and dreams, because you're pursuing the same vision, the same heart, that you're there and you stay friends and have a deep loyalty for each other. That the deepest kind that flows from the deepest reservoir of who God is. And let me just say, this isn't good love and bad love. All of these loves are of God. Yeah. Okay? All of these loves come from the heart of God. The deepest one then is the self-sacrificing kind of love. That comes because my heart is one of commitment. Not because it's constrained or forced to give Love that is sacrificing from me and giving into you. And so 1 John, where we're going to look today on 1 John chapter 4, talks about this. John is, was the youngest of Jesus' disciples. And he rather, in, in the Gospel of John, which he wrote, he doesn't say, I, John. But... <laughs> Do you think he's being modest or not when, when he refers to himself as the disciple that Jesus loved? <laughs> Peter, eat your heart out. I mean, it's like, you, you know, it's like. The good part is, is that that's what he understood. That's what he was receiving from this heart of God revealed in human form. That God's heart for him is one of love. It wasn't one of condemnation wasn't one of, we'll see whether you make, your, become worthwhile and, 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 and make good in this life or not. Yeah. It was like, it's love, it's love, it's love, it's love now, it's love before you've drawn your first breath, it's love when you draw your last breath, no matter what you've done, that is his consistent part because it comes from that kind of a love. You know that deep word, I mean the Greek word probably, this agape love. So John here, now in 1 John, he's writing a letter, he's now, in, now an older man. And, uh, and so he, he's, in the first part of chapter 4, he's discussing Jesus. And, and he's discussing this Jesus who's Christ, who's, who's the Messiah. And he says there's other people that come along who try to uh, pretend they are, but, but those are just falsehoods. Those are false Christs. They're, they're actually against Christ. They are anti-Christ. And then it says that, that, that but you and I, we, we are of God. And then he says, so let's show this. And how are we to show this? By loving one another. So let's pick it up in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. And it starts, dear friends. 
this this word dear friends is is not a real I, I, it's where English fails us a bit oh, this is saying you the chosen one who is utmost and and uh, and ever created in this love it's more like that the King James says, beloved, all right? That puts on you this identity, that you are known and called out, just like, G like, like John says, I'm the one that Jesus loved. Yeah. It's saying, oh, you, loved one of Jesus. That, hey, loved one of Jesus, would you walk with me in this way? Would you... Go have lunch with me, whatever, okay? You with me? Mm -hmm. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. So when we love each other, it's not simply, let's try to be nice and kind and not beat each other up. It's not just, let's be civil with each other. It's not, let's try not to break too many rules as we're together. Mm -hmm. But, but be, because it, it doesn't start from us. This love comes from God. So if this love of God is not imparted into you, guess what can't happen? You can't love each other. It can't flow from you. It's not going to be resident unless... You're opening your life for it. Next verse, or next phrase. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Now in our scientific, logical world, this is a very strong statement. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So, this is saying, if you are not loving, you don't know God. If you don't see love in your life, don't tell anybody that you have a relationship with God. It doesn't say that the only people who love are people who've been born of God. Because everybody is made in the image of God. Let's keep moving. Verse 8. Everyone does not love. Oh, sorry. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And this phrase, God is love, is said two times in this scripture. Now, it goes right away from this statement of that God is love to how he showed his love. God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That word atoning, at one in, okay? It brings us back into one. It, it reconciles. That's what atonement is. So this love, it's not that we love God. So God doesn't look at us and say, ah, oh, there's somebody who's really loving me, and so I'm going to start loving them. It starts with God. So love isn't defined by us mere mortals. Rather, love is defined by who God is, by what we see coming from Him, the actions of sacrifice, of courage, by taking the distance of coming near to us. So it's not God the Father saying, come here, boy. 
It's, it's God coming from heaven down to earth and coming onto our turf. It's God the Father getting down and playing in the sandbox with the little kids and establishing relationship with them. And then he says, will you keep coming on with me? So there is that come and enter in, but it's not a conditional come. This foundation of love that is who God is, is what it all flows from. Verse 11, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This turns out a little further, and it almost says, if you're really going to love other people, it's going to be God's love going through you. People are pretty difficult to love Amen. unless it's God's love that's in your heart and that's coming from you. People, not, I mean, people beside you notwithstanding, how many of you would agree with that? <laughs> so the revelation of God to us is not something that we can hoard. You can't have this love of God pouring into me, pouring into you, and that's where it stops. It, it backs up, it clogs that way. Because God's love is infinite and your capacity is finite. So at some point, it fills up and it becomes stale and stagnant. The common example is the Dead Sea in the Middle East, where water flows in but nothing flows out. And it's full of all kinds of sediment and salts and things like that that doesn't make it, nothing can live in there. But what has love increased is when it's shared. It's when it's given out to others. Love works like a muscle. It grows when you use it. You can receive more of God's love as you share it with other people. This is verse 13. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He's given us of his spirit. And we've seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. We could do a whole other message in this, in these two verses, but we won't. But let me just mention that the whole Trinity is mentioned here. The Spirit, the Father, the Son, who's the Savior of the world. The Spirit is the evidence that God, in His love, is in us. And Jesus is the one that makes that possible. So it's not that, you, that Jesus is the loving one. And the Father is the one that carries the big stick to make sure you don't do wrong. And the Spirit is, well, some other quality. It's like, it's all one here. It's all part of God. There's one God. There's these three distinct entities. But they're one, and they all carry that same motivation. God is for you. His love is being poured out to you. The question is, what will we do with it? If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, verse 15, God lives in them and they in God, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So this is describing God and who he is, a short description of God. It starts with this statement, God is love. That's the thesis, that the hypothesis upon which everything else here is based. Then verse 19, we love because he first loved us. Amen. And Asha, if we could go to the slide, the last slide that I gave you, okay? 
that starts with, we love him. There's some translations that says, we love him because he first loved us, meaning Jesus. There's some translations that say, we love each other because he first loved us. But the true sense of the original language is just the third one, we love. Yeah. We love because he loves us. Yeah. You love whoever you love, whatever you love. You love God, you love other people, you love because his love has been poured out for you. Amen. So you can't love in this way that it's talking about until you receive God's love for you. Let's go to the perspective slide, the one with the heart. Here, here's, here's Jesus with his heart of love for us. And, Lord, if we could catch the reality this morning in deeper and fresh ways, that, that this is your life, this is your mission, and you create, you, I mean, you work with us that way, and then you call us to work with you in that same way. So often we put the stress on what we're supposed to do, and we use the Bible as a rule book. That says those things like, be nice, be kind, give to others, do good. If you do all of those things, then God will be happy with you and will bless your life. That's not what the message of the Bible is. Right. Rather it is, this is God's revelation. This is how he knows you, how he wants to relate with you, how he loves you, and how he calls you on to be with him. Yeah. So we've been talking about, God's been stirring our hearts about loving God for God's sake, right? We're praying to him for his presence to be among us. Not just that things go good for us. Not just that stuff happens. We don't want to relate to God for his stuff at the deepest level. We want to relate to God for for God, for himself. Okay? So God shows up in this world in the person of Jesus. And now he's very accessible. No longer far off. He's talking our language. He's living among us. And he calls us to relate with him. But we can't do that by only going off in a corner and saying, just going to be me and Jesus. Just going to live this life until we get whisked out of here. But we're called to be, but Jesus is on a mission in this world. He doesn't only love you. He loves you best just like everybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. If you get the paradox of that. Mm -hmm. Each one of us <laughs> is unique. Yes. Just like everyone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you find their name. Yeah. And so Jesus says, this love that you experience can't be really fully Known and practiced and seen in me until you're on mission with me, sharing it with others. So this heart of Jesus is to say, come on, join me, share this heart of mine with other people, communicate this love, possess it in yourself so that your heart of love is what's extending out to other people. So first of all, you have to know that it exists. You have to believe what I'm saying, that this essence is that I am loved with God. If you could go to the slide three, knowing that I'm loved by God. 
But knowing that you're loved is one thing if it's only something in your head. This isn't a theology test. This is saying, God, open our hearts so that we experience it. So that our minds and our hearts are in agreement. That we not only know, but we receive the love that you have for us. When we receive it, our lives begin to change because this spirit of a loving God is inside of us. Working with us. And we don't stay the same. Somebody said one time, many times, God loves you just the way you are and far too much for you to stay that way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. When he comes in, it revolutionizes our lives. Yes. So we know that God loves us. This morning we say, we receive your love, yes. O oh God. So that God, we can love you in return. Thank you, God. And as we love you in return, we also love the people around us. The people in our families, the people in this church, the people in our neighborhoods, it works, the people that were that are in our way on the highways, the people Level. that we'll get there, guys. <laughs> okay? Because of this love that flows from God. It's not about understanding it. It's about trusting it. It's about entering into it and saying, God, renew my life in your love this morning. Will you stand? And will you worship your love to the Father God, to Jesus and to his spirit? We always have people ready to pray with you, to help you on that next step, to help hold your hand and take you over that obstacle. Or if you've never experienced this love of God, if your way of relating to God has been one of just following the rules, of trying to be good enough, and you want to change that path today, and you want to surrender your life and say, I want to only relate to you out of your amazing heart of love, also come forward. Every person who's here to pray for you has experienced that same transformation in their own lives. And they'll gladly guide you to that.